Hey everyone, this is uh, Reese Thompson, I'm a aspiring uh, national master. Uh, I just finished this one tournament that I played in, and I have three interesting positions from that tournament that are really instructive, that are really cool. Um, one that I missed, and two that I was able to find the move and I was able to beat my opponent. These were all opponents either rated really similar to me or, or much higher rated. Um, currently, my rating is about 2150. And in my second round, um, after being beat by a Grandmaster, I played Mike Tubinov. He's a 2130 rated opponent. And we got this position. Um, feel free to pause the video. It's white to move. Try and find the best move. Uh, I missed this one in the game. Um, I ended up playing Queen H4. Obviously, you know, you got to save the Queen. You got to figure out where to put it. And I was kind of a little uh, unsure. And I decided to put it on h4. Turns out that's not such a great move in the position. It's not a bad one. White keeps the advantage. You know, white has a nice center and this nice bishop on d3. But in the game, uh, or in, in, you know, in analysis after, I saw that I had this crushing idea. Obviously, I saw that I could take the pawn. Um, and that's a normal idea in these winnower French positions. And my opponent would have played rook g8. And it's very important that I play queen h6 here. And I saw this idea in the game. That's why I didn't go for queen h4. I saw that my opponent could drop a nasty tactic on me. It's not too fun. Uh, I thought that this move was really bad. I thought knight takes d4, and I'm in a big trouble here. Why? Well, it sacrifices the knight, but the whole idea is to play queen to c3. And this looks really bad at first. I could capture queen to c3 check, and I'm in a little bit of trouble here, but I have an amazing move here. And can anybody find this one? You can pause the video here as well. But the really cool move uh, that I missed, obviously that's the whole point of the queen of being on h6, I drop the queen back to d2. And I'm indirectly defending the knight on d4. So this is a very common tactic in the French. Everybody should know this one. When the queens are eyeing each other up, all you have to do is move the bishop, bishop b5, check. And after bishop d7, white's going to capture the bishop and then simply capture the queen, being a queen up. So obviously, you know, he's not going to capture the knight after queen d2. He's going to capture the rook. And, well, the queen looks kind of funny here. And the best move here is to trap the queen inside the position. Obviously, he's attacking the knight. So we need to protect the knight, but we need to do it in the best way possible. And we do it by playing c3. And as you can see, the knight's going to come to b3 and trap the queen. And the, the, the nice thing about c3 is that it cuts off the a2 square. The bishop controls now the b1 square. And it blocks the pathway out from the queen. So this was a really nice idea that I missed in the game. And I ended up drawing this game um, even though I had multiple winning positions. So this was a kind of a bummer. Uh, I played really, really well in this tournament, um, but in my second game, I ended up getting the win. So let's look at this one. My opponent played very, very quickly this game. He was, these were young, most of the time I was playing, you know, young players, people that were, you know, um, maybe like 13 or 14, um, and they played insanely quickly, and they lost because of it. So um, my opponent played kind of a rash move in this position. You know, it looks really equal. The pawns are you know, the same pawn structure here, um, nothing really too much going on. It's pretty equal. But my opponent goes g4 and opening his king up, which he didn't really have to do this, right? There was no reason to start pushing pawns in front of your king and, and crack them open. So I just continued to play simple chess. We exchanged the bishops and he developed his queen. I developed my queen and now he played knight b3. A move in which, you know, it, it's, it's like he just wants to trade all the pieces off and, and you know, get a draw and go home, right? That's essentially kind of what I got in this game. My opponent is rated 2156, a little bit higher rated than me, but we're pretty much the same rating. Um, feel free to pause the video here. This is a really important moment in which I took advantage of my, of my opponent's move G4. So feel free to pause and, and see what I played. In this, uh, in this position, I played a very important move, Knight to e6, and this is a this is a really nice move, and black starts to gain a huge advantage in this position just from this one knight e6 um, reroute, and obviously the knight, 
is going to f4. And it's a monster outpost, and I was able to win the game because of this. So my opponent was very fearful because once I come to f4, the h3 pawn is hit, and it's really awkward, it's super awkward. How do you defend it? Well, don't really want to move your king into h2 eventually, you know, because of the queen being here. So my opponent went for a very ugly looking defense, but a defense nonetheless. And I continued to improve my pieces. We traded a couple of rooks. I decided to keep the rooks on the board here. And in general, I just kept improving my position and defending my weaknesses. And I came up with another nice uh, idea here. So I have my pieces in very good squares, but one of my pieces in particular, the knight on d7, is poorly placed. And so I was able to reroute this knight to f8. And from there, it's going to come to this very nice uh, e6 square, which defends everything, the c5 pawn, the g5 pawn, and everything else, the knight. And you can just tell the difference between this knight and this knight. And that was one of the reasons why I won this position. My opponent lashed out with this g4 move, and he paid the price for it. So uh, he tried a couple of different ideas, queen e4 and queen e3, but you know, all of these kind of back and forth moves, it's not all that great. Uh, <laughs> And I was able to infiltrate with my queen to d1. And once this queen gets to f1, you start to see some checkmating ideas pile up. And he had to drop his queen back to c2. And I played a very nice winning move, knight to d4. The whole concept behind this move is that f takes and takes. We both now create pass pawns, but my pass pawn is much more dangerous than his pawn. So after a move like c5, I could play d3, attacking the queen. And after queen d2, I have a very nice move here. Can you spot it? It's knight to e2. The idea being that I'm threatening to checkmate on g1. And if my opponent captures, I simply just capture with the queen. I could capture with a pawn too, but this is very simple because he has three squares and I only have one square. And his king's too far away. So it's a nice game, but it was because of my opponent's uh, rash decision to lash out and to play g4. Um, so a uh, nice win there. And my last game, I had this very interesting position where my we had a, uh, a King's Indian style of position where I'm attacking on the king's side. He's attacking on the queen's side. This position, to be honest, is not too good for me. Um, you can notice that white's done a lot on the queen's side. You know, he's captured this a5 pawn. He's created a passed a pawn here. Um, I have a pretty big weakness on c7. Position's pretty bad. Um, but, you know, I've got some stuff going. We've always got chances in the Kings Indian, right? And my opponent was rated in this game 2350. Very strong junior FM. So um, very strong. But he, again, moved too quickly. And I think that was the whole, uh, the whole premise of this tournament was, hey, let's not move too quickly. Let's play some, um, so let's play, let's think and play some good moves. And in this position, I played another quick move and played Bishop to E2. A losing move. Losing, uh, really bad. Uh, and in this position, I came up with a nice tactical resource. Pause the video and try and figure it out, guys. I played the nice move, Rook captures a5. And this is an exchange stack, but it, it's not even really an exchange stack. It's just good. It's just good. Um, my opponent should go for knight takes d6. And after pawn takes, then capture the Rook and queen captures. The reason why is that this bishop that he captured on d6 is actually really powerful. That's what he should do. In the game, he took, again, quickly, took on a5. And I checked now with the bishop on c5. And if my opponent goes to f1, then I have a really nice tactic with knight takes e4. The idea is that it's a clearance type of idea. I'm clearing the way for my queen to go to h4 and potentially for the pawn to push up to f3. And once my queen gets to h4, um, there's going to be checkmate threats on f2. So you really see the power uh, of this bishop on c5. Really nice idea. And in the game, my opponent didn't go to f1, but went to h1 instead. And now I played the same idea, knight to h5. And I had a nice uh, sneaky move in mind that if my opponent were to capture on g3, I would play knight to g3 check, pawn captures, and now 
the bishop is sealing the king in. So all we have to do is just play a move like queen g5 followed by queen h6, checkmate. So really nice idea there. My opponent kind of was, not kind of, he was in a losing position here and kind of just had to uh, sack all of his pieces. So he started with the knight and he started with uh, some other pieces too here. So I'm threatening knight to g3 um, in this position and also g3. So if you were to capture on d4, I would have g3, h3, and bishop captures h3. And this is gonna result in a checkmate because I can play bishop takes g2 followed by queen h2 check and queen f2. So it's gonna be really, really bad. And so my opponent ended up having to give his queen away after queen h4, he had to play queen takes and pawn takes. And I ended up winning this game very, very quickly because of this. So. Those were three key moments in my tournament um, in my tournament games, and I hope you enjoyed this. Feel free to subscribe to the channel below, like the video if you liked it. I also have a Facebook group where I post puzzles every single day. Uh, it has about 700-ish members in it. You can join that for free down below in the description. And otherwise, um, that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. My name is Reese, and I will see you guys on the next episode. Peace.